Good evening, everyone. It is Thursday evening, April 7th, and the United States is under an active weather pattern with three low pressure systems. The main one over in the Great Lakes area. We have another one pulling off on the East Coast. That well, That's what the National Weather Service forecast map shows. Uh, but really, I think it's part of the same system. And we have another one pulling off onto the Northwest Coast. But really, the main feature, the most exciting part of this weather map to me is the heat the heat uh, we do have some heavy snow to speak about too but the most exciting part really is the heat yesterday the temperature hit this is amazing the temperature hit 111 degrees in south texas this is right before that cold front moved through uh, that's something that uh, yeah <laughs> Thank you. We need that one for 111 degrees in South Texas. Just unbelievable. And then this heat, uh, it's, you know, it go, in the desert southwest, we have a high pressure ridge, which is developing. Temperatures are going to come nowhere near that. At least they're not forecast to, but temperatures are forecasted to come very close to the record. Even today, we had forecast highs low to mid-90s, even into central California. Those records were also in the low to mid-90s, so it's a close call whether I th- probably some areas did tie the record, maybe even broke the record. But tomorrow, temperature record conditions are expected in Los Angeles as high temperatures go into the mid-90s. The old record, 92 degrees, and then the heat cools off for Shabbos. Temperatures no longer make it into the 90s by then. That's for Los Angeles. Other places are going to get even hotter on Shabbos. We have other parts in Southern California. Phoenix, Yuma, Arizona going into the upper 90s both days, Friday and Shabbos. Phoenix, Arizona, mid 90s. You never know. You could always get into the upper 90s and you have some Death Valley, California is not included in this. Not included in this. How do you like that? Isn't that how how are they not included in this that death valley is always hotter you know a few days ago death valley was the hottest temperature in the country many times it is rio grande village a lot of times is the hottest temperature in the country the city that's recently been taken over is falcon lake texas and i have to tell you that that is a tremendous highlight what we have coming up in falcon lake texas this week 108 degrees this Tuesday, forecast high for Falcon Lake, Texas, 108 degrees. You know, a lot of times, whatever it is in Falcon Lake, Texas, it's the same thing in Zapata, Texas. And sometimes it, it, it's also forecast to be 108 in Zapata, Texas. The cities are just a few miles apart from each other. Uh, and some people, I thought they were really the same city, but I think they're 2.6 miles apart from each other. But, uh, but, 108 for both of those cities on Tuesday. That's the forecast, and we're only in April. But another real big shocker is when you go into Candace. Now, you have to realize before, in order to realize the shocker here, we do have a warm spell moving into the Midwest. That's very true. But, you know, in the past years, and when you have a warm spell that moves into the Midwest, so a lot of times the warmth goes all the way up. In fact, Rapid City, South Dakota, a lot of times when you get a warm spell, the, the temperatures in Rapid City, South Dakota are warmer there than Atlanta, Georgia. I've seen that frequently. Once it's warm, it's warm. You know, this, the solar insulation is getting pretty high up there. Still not as high as it is down south, but the days are longer up there. And temperatures get really warm. You get that high pressure ridge in the desert southwest. It moves east. What usually happens is temperatures are really hot in the desert southwest. As it translates east, those temperatures drop a little bit, but they remain warm. And temperatures generally would hit well into the 80s up into Nebraska. You would get a pop-up 90 here and there. And that's going to make the headlines, certainly on this podcast, that's what we would start off with, the 90 degrees in some small town in South Dakota, something like that. I think we've had that last spring. It's still remarkable. It's in April. But it would break a record probably unless it happened to coincidentally fall out on the same date as the last year, 90 degrees. But, you know, there's plenty of days in April where you can break the record. 
Uh, and then that heat then moves east. And then it's kind of normal that like around the Chicago area, it just doesn't seem to make it over here. Yeah, it, it, uh, it almost makes it and it kind of makes it. It's a watered down version of what's going on in the plain. So it's still beautiful. Temperatures will still hit 70, but we're not talking about 90. And then a lot of times on the north side, it, it really doesn't even make it. Temperatures just hit 60, which for because of that Lake Michigan influence. But 60 is still amazing for chicago you know that's great that's still if it's just normal that's really nice things but this one is a little bit different this is a very different situation taking place there first of all we have the system in the desert southwest temperatures are in the 90s okay the system moves east so what's supposed to happen is the temperatures drop and yeah that's what's going to be happening okay the temperatures drop but you have, okay, so you have mid-90s in the desert southwest. The system moves east. Forecasts are like upper 70s for peak heating in Kansas City. But people have, I, I think it, you know, it's question, the, it's questionable. The computer models, there's a storm system coming by in the midweek, and they do not have a good handle on it. The warmest temperature so far in Kansas City, Missouri this year has been 83 degrees. The Washington Post reports that next week there's the possibility that all cities, cities like Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, may, may reach that temperature or even warmer for next week. That means Kansas City would have to go up to 84. St. Louis would have to go up to 83. Chicago would have to go up to 75. That's what would have to happen. The warmest so far for these three cities, I think they all occurred March 2nd, but March 2nd, all the way back then, certainly Kansas City, with a temperature of 74 for Chicago, 82 for St. Louis, and 83 for Kansas City. So that would be the a possibility. You know, I don't know if it's going to make it here in Chicago. Meteorologist Tom Skilling in this morning's paper was forecasting a high of 74 on Wednesday. We don't have other forecasts which are anything close to that. Uh, you know, AccuWeather saying 67, and it's it's not so clear cut like the usual waves of warmth that goes across the country. You have Kansas City, maybe they will hit 80. Okay, but then you have Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas, temperature going into the low 90s on Tuesday, 91 degrees. How is that happening? 108 in Falcon Lake, Texas, 91 in Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas makes sense, to tell you the truth. It's the other cities. The warmth is not really going so far up north, and they're calling this a widespread severe weather outbreak. I think we've done better than that. We've done much better than that. I have big questions, big cautions, and... Anyone who thinks next week is a widespread severe weather outbreak. there's, But uh, many areas from Sunday night through Wednesday, the St. Louis area should prepare for strong thunderstorms, especially Wednesday. These cities, you know, you can include St. Louis. This is a multi-day. Maybe that's what it is. It's a multi-day severe weather risk for places further north, including St. Louis. Not just one day. Not just. It's a multi-day thing. Three days. Chicago also may get thunderstorms by by Wednesday at least. Uh, and there's also some stuff going on earlier in the week as well. And then we have another system that comes in towards the latter part of the following weekend. That heat for next week is something, the warmth is something to look forward to for normal people. For weather enthusiasts, you know, there's snow, there's heat. So you could, we have those cities, which are like these shocker cities, 91 again in Wichita, Kansas is forecast for Tuesday, according to AccuWeather, I believe, and 108 for Falcon Lake, Texas. Back on the West Coast, it's also just interesting how each city has its day of hottest temperatures. It's kind of similar here, you know, Denver, Colorado, I think they're going to get real warm on Chavez temperatures. I think North Plate, Nebraska, this, this confused <laughs> this puts a, this just causes confusion here. Their warmest day is on shop. You know, everyone else is Tuesday. North Plate, Nebraska, shot this high is in the upper 70s. And uh, Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, very similar. Upper 70s, maybe even 80 degrees. That's the classic warm spell that you know that we deal with every year the only thing is is that it's bending it's going up north like it's not really supposed to be in nebraska it's like it's supposed to just go up north but it just 
curves over these other places like Missouri. It just it it's like not really going to make it to many places much further south than these cities, which to the east. It's not going to really make it that far east, but. Uh, we will see temperatures in the 70s for many locations and throughout uh, Missouri, Kansas. Many areas can look forward to a four-day spring, especially southwest Missouri, four consecutive days of temperatures in the 70s. St. Louis, perhaps four, maybe only three. Chicago, maybe one, especially if you're in Kankakee or Joliet and areas of the south side. If you do go to the zoo, the Brookfield Zoo would have warmer temperatures than the Lincoln Park Zoo. That's the warm side of things. We also, on the places on the east coast, I hear they lucked out in some areas in West Virginia. At least at some point, there was a time there was expected to be thunderstorms. The front just stopped. And it didn't move the way it was forecasted to move last night. The thing just stopped. It might have even started to go backwards in the middle of the night. And uh, one meteorologist said he knew it all along, but yet he he knew it, but he didn't forecast it. So uh, in any case, uh, we have flood warnings in effect for places in New York. Uh, There's flooding going on in many areas. The Chicago River is also the Chicago National Weather Service is issuing flood warnings for our area. This front eventually will make it off the East Coast, and that's when the colder air, you know, the air aloft in the upper atmosphere, this is record-breaking material, Uh, temperatures at various levels in the upper atmosphere uh, range to well, well, well below zero. For this time of the year, it's record material, says the National Weather Service. We're going to be dealing with precipitation, you know, the Chicago area, it's raining as I speak, but the precipitation is going to gradually be changing over to snow because of the cold temperatures. But, you know, if it was earlier in the year, we would be saying that upper 30s is just too warm for snow. It's just that the cold air aloft is going so far, it's so close to the surface, despite the fact that surface temperatures are warm, there's a pretty good chance that the precipitation tomorrow morning may fall as snow. Now, if it doesn't fall as snow tomorrow morning, we have even a better chance tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening, maybe late afternoon or evening, I uh, You know, that's already when the clouds reach, the updraft is reaching into convective convective, uh, criteria there. So you could get a heavy, they call it a snow squall, but nobody has mentioned snow squall. So let's not say it. Just a heavy snow shower, possible, a pop, there might be a period of heavy snow for a period of time tomorrow evening with a gusty wind. That might be happening tomorrow evening. And if that should happen after sunset, that snow would accumulate a little bit for tomorrow night. No big deal. The next, uh, that would be the final, that's the final, final, uh, low, the miniature low pressure system associated with this large low pressure system. It's a cut off low. It's, it got disconnected from the jet stream, so it's barely moving, but it's just going to fall apart. And then we get the warmer air that's going to start to move in Sunday, but especially Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have our best shot, but the real warm air doesn't really make it here into Chicago. It kind of stays out in Kansas and Nebraska. Things just don't, it's questionable what happens after that, as we've mentioned. There's some other very, very noteworthy things that are going on in this country. Dust storms. This is awesome stuff. Life-threatening stuff, but just dust, I guess awesome. Just just to, I don't know. Uh, so the National Weather Service, is, there's places in Kansas they're issuing. It's not just a, usually they say a blowing dust advisory. This time it's a dust storm warning. There are places in Kansas where they're saying visibility will drop to under a quarter mile frequently throughout the time. Other places are saying the visibility will be zero. They say if you do encounter a dust storm, it is a life-threatening situation. You should pull over on the side of the road says the National Weather Service. They say also you should put your headlights off. I don't know why. And they say you should put your car parked and you should take your foot off the brake. That's exactly what they said. And according to one National Weather Service, it's not just you should pull over to the side of the road. You should pull over as far from the road as you can possibly be. 
Uh, so, and then according to another National Weather Service, people should wear breathing masks for the dust. Another one says stay indoors, but the other one says go to a basement, go to the lowest floor of the home. The only thing is the lowest floor of the home, that's in regards to actually a windstorm. They're also having blowing dust there. But there's tremendous windstorms taking place with the National Weather Service's warning. If you're in those areas, many of those places, also the same areas, the plains, they're getting 60-mile-per-hour wind gusts. Many areas, 65-mile-per-hour wind gusts. The places under the dust storm warnings are having 70-mile-per-hour wind gusts. You know, 58-mile-per-hour wind gusts are higher. Blow, they're damaging winds. They blow trees down they they're telling people stay away from the trees stay away from forest areas and also stay away from windows go down to the basement so the one issue here is that i'm speaking as a weather enthusiast and this might come across as uh as as someone who's actually in these situations uh it it doesn't sound right so if you're actually in those situations, uh, just realize that Emir Tzashem, God willing, everything will be safe. Just follow those instructions and and things should be fine. We have also that snow continues to go on in the upper Midwest. Amazingly, we still have areas under a winter storm warning. There's a city in North West Michigan, right next to Lake Superior, that's also getting, in addition to the regular snow, they're getting a lot of lake effect snow, heavy snow, and they're expecting several inches more snow tonight. So there's winter storm warnings up there, just like they were yesterday, and there's winter weather advisories. I didn't see anything going on in the Black Hills, which is in southwest South Dakota. You know, it's kind of unbelievable. If you really take a look at the map yesterday, you see all these areas with winter storm warnings. And it's actually just an area in northeast Minnesota yesterday morning. I don't think there was any area in North Dakota which had a, a winter storm warning. And there are no Black Hills in North Dakota. It goes in Wyoming and South Dakota. The Black Hill, that's a little area in South Dakota just west west of Rapid City. That's all the way in the south. And then all of a sudden you see eight inches of as a 930 yesterday morning already eight inches of snow fell over that area but you have to realize you look at all the the rest of the state nothing there's no reports of any snow at all nowhere in south dakota north north dakota extreme eastern areas it's all clobbered in minnesota you're just getting tons of snowfall reports the clouds go all the way back all the way back in the south but they're not precipitating there's nothing coming out of the clouds but this just shows you how the effect, how significant the effect of mountains are. The updraft, the rising air, the quicker it rises, that's a major ingredient in producing precipitation. A cloud is doesn't always do it. Clouds don't always do it. And when the, those winds are forced to go up the mountains, you're forced to produce updraft. It's the same clouds over there as there are in the rest of the state. I have no reason to think otherwise. But it's snowing and snowing heavily there. Yesterday, we saw eight inches as of 9.30 in the morning already. They may have gotten more. There were winter storm warnings in effect until 6 p.m. yesterday. Already 9.30 in the morning, there were reports of eight inches of snow there. And the rest of the state had absolutely nothing. One would think that this, there must be a lake there. This is a completely different system. But, but no, you look on the, the satellite, you look on the weather maps, it's the same system. It's just pretty amazing in how small of an area it is. People who love snow <laughs> should consider moving out there by the Black Hills. You also have a situation going on tonight. Uh, this was a big shocker to me. I've seen it before, and maybe it shouldn't be a shocker, but whenever you look at a winter weather advisory from the National Weather Service, so you check what city is forecasting it, what city is issuing this advisory. So, you know, a lot of times it's Fairbanks, Alaska. Fairbanks, Alaska has something going on tonight. I I don't know what it is. They have something going on tonight, I believe. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, it's Duluth, Minnesota. A lot of times you get different places up north. And then all of a sudden today you see winter weather advisory issued by some National Weather Service in Tennessee. In Tennessee, what could they possibly be issuing a winter weather advisory about? What could it be? It's the Smoky Mountains. It's probably the same deal. 
upslope winds, you know, it's no, it's a different deal actually, because you also have higher elevation, so it's cold enough for it to snow there. You have the Blue Ridge Mountain, the Blue Ridge Mountain Range, just west of the Baltimore area, and then today was the first time I've heard the the West Virginia, I believe, the coal fields, coal, C O A L. I hear all about the corn fields. The Midwest Corn Belt in in the weather reports in the by the forecast discussion when you get into the summertime, and tonight you hear about the Mississippi River, how the precipitation, the chances are much higher once you get east of the Mississippi River, as if the river itself is doing something. Which some say yes, some say no, but the coal fields, that's a term that some say went out of use in the 1980s, but forecasters are still using it. So. Uh, anyways, that was connected to some type of thunderstorm development this morning, something in the coal fields out in West Virginia. Either it it did happen or it didn't happen over there. Um, I don't know if I covered it all. I, I do this without uh, – I don't have things in front of me. But to, let's see. What else? Well, unless something else comes to mind, we covered the the dust hazards. Uh, we do uh, we do have a tornado. We have a tornado watch in effect for an area. I'm not sure where that is. We have a that I, that might have expired. But if it is, it's in the southeast part of the United States. That's where the severe weather outbreak was expected to be again for today. Thank you for listening. I wish everyone a wonderful night.